Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and strength coach, and I specialize in vestibular disorders. You are on my channel, The Steady Coach. And today I am so excited to bring you this interview with Petra. Petra has been diagnosed with triple PD, and after suffering for a while, Petra discovered my channel earlier this year, and I remember when she joined the membership community, one of her posts said that her goal was to come onto my channel for a recovery story interview. So it's really bringing that full circle to bring you this story today. So Petra is still in the process of recovering from Triple PD, but her life has changed dramatically since she was at the peak of her symptoms several months ago. So without further ado, take a listen and Petra will share her story with you in her own words. Okay, Petra, thank you so much for being here with us. And I was hoping we could start by just having you tell us about yourself. Yeah, my name is um, Petra. I um, live in New Zealand since 2019. Um, I moved here with my family, my husband, Daniel, he's a GP, and um, my children, uh, Lottie and Tino, they are um, 19 and 16 now. Mm. And um, Yeah, we, we just wanted to have a new challenge in our life. And um, we traveled to New Zealand in 2015, and we fell in love with the country. And so we thought we'd give it a try for two years. And um, yeah, after three weeks being here, our kids told us we, we don't want to go back to Germany. We want to stay here. So we decided to stay here until they are ready with school. Our daughter just finished school and um, our son will be ready in one or two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you and said... I'm educated as a kindergarten teacher. I'm not working as a kindergarten teacher anymore. Um, I just started doing guided tours at the new Hundertwasser building here in Fangrai. Oh, cool. Okay. I, I, I just landed on something though that you said a few minutes ago. You said that you thought it would be a challenge, like a fun challenge, but I don't think you realized <laughs> what kind of challenge you were about to get yourself into. No, 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 no. We, um, yeah, when we arrived, everything was fine in the world. And um, yeah, a few months later, COVID came and everything changed. So yeah. we will need to have some friends over for a visit. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she got stuck here in New Zealand for four months. She only wanted to stay four weeks or five weeks, um, which was good for us having her um, such a long time. Yeah, but after that... Um, uh, the stress factor started because um, because we were only on a residency visa and we were not able to travel anymore. And um, just this feeling not being able to um, visit my family or my parents um, if something happens to them, that freaked me out. <laughs> uh, yeah, understandably. So, so when did all this start hitting? Because you and I know each other because at some point, later you found my channel you were suffering from dizziness symptoms and we're going to get right into all that but back let's back up from there T take me through when your health started taking a hit from what was going on um i would say as soon as um COVID started and my mom was still here um i started feeling more stressed because um every day we tried to find out is she able to travel back or not. Mm -hmm. um, all the planes got canceled. And um, yeah, so we, we were just following the news. And um, yeah, I felt like I, I'm getting stress, more stressed about it, but I, I didn't think about it. I, I just thought, oh, okay, that's normal. Everyone is worried. At mm -hmm. So, and um, yeah, in November last year, oh no, in, in, um, August last year, my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. So I was really worried about her and um, the feeling not being able to visit her and be there. Um, that was really, really hard for me. And um, But everything is fine now. Um, she's healthy. And um, after that, um, 
I got my second um, vaccination, COVID vaccination, mm -hmm. and I had to go to a, a drive-through with a car, and I was alone in the car, and I got my vaccination, and I think I, I got a little kind of a panic attack in the car. Mm -hmm. but I'm not the person who is um, who likes to get help from others, so I started breathing, and um, I didn't want to worry the people who were taking care of us. I just thought, let's go out here. Um, yeah, and I think two or three weeks later, I was working in the garden, um, pulling weeds out on a big slope um, for about two hours. And um, afterwards, I went into the shower. And when I came out of the shower, I felt like being on a boat. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like there was liquid or water in my ear. So I mm -hmm. thought, oh, it's coming from the shower. Mm -hmm. and I didn't think much about it and um, yeah so next morning I woke up and it was still there and I thought oh there's still water in my ear um, yeah so I started really worrying about after a week and my husband he's a GP he said oh, sometimes this happens it will okay, go away don't worry but after two weeks I thought no it's not going away and um, so we started treating all things you do when you have an ear infection. I thought maybe it's it's an ear infection. So I had nose drops and mm -hmm. or inhalation or whatever you do. And um, sometimes I felt a little bit better and sometimes not. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and after four weeks, um, I thought, no, it's not getting better. And um, I, I didn't like to to be up and walk. I was mostly laying on the sofa, closing my eyes um, to get relief. And um, yeah, then my husband said, okay, uh, maybe we have to see an ear specialist. Mm -hmm. because I had this feeling it's coming from my ear. Mm -hmm. And I also had the sensation like on the right side of my throat, if I would have a peppermint all the time in my throat. Hmm. I, I could feel every, there was much sensation in my throat and ear um, channel. Mm -hmm. And um, it is not so easy to go to a specialist here in New Zealand, um, but um, he accepted me and he sent me first to an audiologist. Mm -hmm. so I went through this and um, this was December. And um, in December, I had kind of an argument with my daughter and afterwards, I got really bad and um, I, I couldn't really drive um, very well. So I stopped that. My daughter drove me um, and I felt like after our argument, I felt like being halfway out of my body. And um, then I went to the audiologist and he um, um, looked for everything and he said, oh, I'm jealous. You're here better than, than I. <laughs> Um, yeah, he sent me to the ear specialist and he um, did all the examinations and um, I think about 20 minutes and afterwards he said, I'm 90% sure you're suffering from triple PD. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a link and um, yeah, I went home relieved that I got in a diagnose <laughs> mm -hmm. and then I started my research and I thought, oh, that's going to be a tricky one. Yeah. And um, luckily, in January, I found your channel. Wow, that was quick after diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the best thing that could happen to me. But again, I started watching all uh, your videos and I tried some exercises. And um, so I didn't watch everything um, every day. And um, so I felt like every topic is coming to me when it's, needs to come so um yeah i tried the um the the eye um exercise you mm -hmm. did which, which helped me a little bit everything helped a little bit to get a little bit better but i um i was thinking to join your community but again it's not so easy for me um getting help from others so i was always sitting like, okay join or not join or not and <laughs> Your emails um, 
helped me very much because I think every two weeks there was a, during the course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, then I thought, okay, be brave. 10 seconds, be brave. And then I clicked the join button and that was the best decision I could make because then I started watching your live Q&A videos. And um, in one of them, you said um, that people who are mostly taking care of people, they got it. And I said, oh, chick. And this was a live Q&A where there were so many chick. So many people say that me, me too, me too. And it's just like yeah. a long line of people saying me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I, I started feeling slowly better. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I ha also had some um, down points again. And um, in, in March, I spoke to a friend um, in Germany and um, in Germany, people always go to an MRI immediately. And she said, you're still suffering from this? You need an MRI. And I was like, what? no, I don't want to go there. I have a diagnosis. I can feel it's getting better. But just thinking about it and that someone said it to me afterwards, I was down for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really down. And I said to my husband, it's so hard. Every time I, I feel like I need to pull myself out of the next hole. Um, yeah, but um, he said, I'm a GP. Do you think I wouldn't take you to an MRI if I would think there is something really worse? You're getting better. People who have something seriously in their brain, they don't get better. They don't get better. Um, so just trust yourself. And so I pulled myself out again and I um, yeah, started reading books and um, I found a really good book from a German woman about finding your higher self and um, yeah, trust your body. And um, the interesting thing in that book was that she mentioned that she went into a silent retreat. And um, after three days in silence, um, her brain started freaking out and she got all these scary, worried thoughts. And uh, she thought she's, she's going to be crazy. And that was my, my next click because I thought, okay, being on the slope for more than two hours, thinking about your life, that was why my brain might have freaked out and started the dizziness. Yeah. So, well, well, you had a lot going on. You, I mean, so it wasn't like anyone standing on a slope, minding their own business, this would happen to them, but you're, you were maybe consciously, but also maybe unconsciously, your brain was just kind of, I just went through this huge transition. This has not turned out the way I expected. Not that it was bad, right? But this was not what you signed up for when you decided to move to another country, which is hard enough as it is. And Petra, I, I, I haven't mentioned this before on YouTube, but I work with a lot of immigrants and people who are children of immigrants. And I don't think that's an accident. No. I think that there's there's a lot of stress yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, when you, when you say this, um, because my, um, my parents, they, they didn't totally agree with our decision. And my, my dad, he was, is the light still okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, my dad was kind of um, grumpy about it. And uh, my mom, she understand, but of course she was, um, was sad that we we made this decision and um i felt like um not being able to go totally to new zealand and um settle here because i still had this thinking of i have to take care of them yeah and um, this is super clear that you get dizzy from this and you don't feel you're steady. being cold yeah how could you feel steady exactly yeah exactly yeah. So, okay. I have so many questions <laughs> based on everything you just told me, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask some questions about symptoms because I know the people watching may be new to the idea of neural circuit dizziness or triple PD. And it really helps when they can see themselves in someone else. Yeah. So 
when you were when you were at that point you described when you were on the sofa all the time because you just felt awful was that, that was that your lowest point where you were feeling the worst so yeah. can you describe what you were experiencing then what kinds of symptoms you had and what your daily life was like um yeah most of the time i um tried to just lay down and close my eyes um I couldn't watch TV anymore. I couldn't um, read anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, yeah, I had always this constantly feeling I have liquid mm -hmm. in my ear. And um, when I got up and I opened my eyes, I was like feeling um, halfway out of my body and mm -hmm. just being on the boat all the time. So you had the boat sensation all the time. 24 yeah. hours a day. And did it go, go up and down? Like sometimes it was worse and sometimes it was better or was it there? Um, it was, um, when I went to, to bed, I lied in bed and I still felt like, and uh, in the morning it was, was okay. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe the first 30 minutes, I still mm -hmm. felt like, um, yeah, there, there is something going, mm -hmm. um, going on. And after 30 minutes, um, it started getting, worse again so mm -hmm. i stopped drinking coffee because i saw this on your um on your um channel um, and channel um but i think this is not because I, I wasn't just a coffee junker but it was just yeah. like trying the next thing mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and um yeah every morning i woke up i it, i felt like in that movie with Bill, Bill Murray and Annie McDowell, where he is a journalist and he's like six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> everything starts again. Um, uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog yeah. Day. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, so then I I watched your video when you said, "Yeah, try not to think about it." <laughs> That's so hard. I know. It's so it's, hard, it's, but. It's terrible advice because it's so hard yeah, it is so hard but it's true um it is still I, i'm doing this i know but um after i read this book this from one woman but finding your higher self she said um start your day with kind of a mantra is it the right word mm -hmm. you have that English? Mm -hmm. mantra mm -hmm. so um i started doing this so every morning i i wake up i think um I'm, I'm grateful for the people who I will meet today. Um, I will, I'm grateful for the love I'm experienced today and all the miracles who are waiting for me. So this is the first thing in the morning I try to think about. Mm -hmm. And then I, I try to do about a minute just breathing and relaxing before I, I get up, just to get this thinking, turn yes. off that brilliant. That is exactly what I tell people to do. Try to get out of your head and into your body. And, yeah. and again, not because I, I, the it's your fault that the thoughts are there, but because it's the more attention we give the thoughts, the more they tend to take hold and the more they keep go, they tend to keep going. But if we can redirect quickly and get into the habit of doing what you're describing, it, it really does make the thoughts stop affecting us so much. Yeah. Yeah. So th there were a couple other things that are remarkable about your story that I wanted to highlight. So, and I'm curious to know what you think. Most of the people that I see on my channel and that we see in the community, I work with one-on-one, -on -one, they have terrible experiences with physicians. They're bounced around from doctor to doctor. They're given all these conflicting diagnoses, they're brushed off, oh, you're just anxious, or they're told, too bad, you're just going to have to live with this for the rest of your life, it never goes away. Oh, I, I hear this, unfortunately, a lot. So I'm wondering, how do you feel that the support from your doctor affected you? So your doctor quickly said, yep, I know what this is, and was supportive and understanding. So how do you feel that helped you in your journey? Um, yeah, because he was super clear and he, he said, I'm 90% sure, um, that, that helped me a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, afterwards going onto your channel and watching your videos, this was, was something where I, I thought, okay, I don't need to go 
anywhere else. I, I have my diagnosis and I have my my ideas and um, possibilities uh, to work on it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, I'm still not um, over it. I, I still have symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like your explanation with the bucket, that was brilliant. And I feel like my water is still a little, a little bit high. As soon as something is coming, it's whoop, um, yeah. going over. And um, that's why I decided, okay, I tried a lot and a lot help, but it's still there. And I tried um, and I found a, a therapist. So I will start in the middle of September. I will start uh, working with a therapist as well because Good. this is, I think, the last thing I need the to do. The last thing. Well, let's still not downplay how far you've come though, right? Because yeah. so you say you still have some 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 sensations or some symptoms, but where where thinking about the, my la one of my previous questions was how bad you were when you were at your worst. Where are you now in comparison to where you were? Um it's it's just um unbelievable. I'm so much better. Um I when I'm, I'm up, I, I can do almost everything. Um, I, I still have uh, symptoms when I'm talking to people mm -hmm. or when I'm um, in the city and cars um, are passing me. So everything, what is moving. Mm -hmm. um, last Saturday, we wanted to go to a salsa e event from a friend um, of us. And um, I entered the room and people were dancing and there was the light. And I said, Okay, now that's not working. Mm -hmm. um, but but did I, it freak you out? Did it make you go, oh gosh, oh no, what am I going to do? Or did you say, well, not now? I, I thought, no, not now. <laughs> right, but it, that's a difference. Yeah, it, it's not it's not freaking me out anymore. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can do renovation. I can stand on a ladder. I can do gardening again. And um, yeah, um, I think in, in April, um, this floating and rocking feeling got more worse. Um, and it was a change from, in the beginning, I had to close my eyes to get relief. And um, this changed. So when I opened my eyes, I felt well, but when I closed my eyes, I started feeling this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tried your Stripe video, because I thought, oh, maybe I'm, I'm getting MDDS symptoms now. So I tried this and, um, this helped, um, not Im immediately, but it helped. And um, when I got the same symptoms again in, in July, I did it again. Are you talking and about somatic tracking? Is that the one you're, the exercise you're talking about? about? The stripes, you, when you're oh, the stripes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, so um, I thought, okay, um, every time I feel this is getting worse, I can just try if it's working. So mm -hmm. as soon as I feel there's something coming, I try this and it that helps. Um, that's great. That helps so really. is the rocking mostly gone now? The rocking feeling? Um, it's it's mostly gone. Um, sometimes if I have a stressful day with a lot of moving things, um, it's in the evening. It's it's more it's mm -hmm. more there, but it's it's um, not all the time anymore. Right. And I'm so happy to hear you say that, Petra, because I I see a lot of despair very specifically about that particular symptom because it's associated with MDDS. And I I don't know why this is. From, from my perspective, MDDS and triple PD are very similar. They just have slightly different symptoms. But from my perspective, it's the same cause. It's a, a, a neural circuit gone bad or gone haywire. And for, but for some reason, people with that set of MDDS type symptoms feel particular despair that they're never going to get better and that the rocking's never going to stop. And, and it's, it's just not true. I, I see a lot of people whose symptoms stop. So I'm so glad that you are going to tell them that as someone who's had it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely getting, getting better mm -hmm. if you're just working on breathing and relaxing and meditation and um yeah doing the stripes so not only once every time i feel oh i could use it now i try for one or two or three days and then when i feel it's getting better i stop mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you don't, it, it sounds like you don't also, you don't do it obsessively. It's more like I'm going to, what I'm hearing. And I think this is a very important point is the way you're using the exercise is very different from how you might have used that exercise a year ago if you hadn't known what you know now. Back then, it would have been, this will fix me. I have to do this. Otherwise, I'm going to feel bad forever. Whereas what you're describing sounds more like you're gently, compassionately saying, oops, my brain is getting a little bit confused here. I'm going to use this exercise to just remind it what I want it to do. Is that yeah. is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah come a long way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have, you have. So, okay. So I, I'm curious then, what do you think if you had to boil it down to the most important points for someone? So someone's brand new to this, they're having symptoms or they're not new to this, but they're new to my channel. And the idea that this is neuroplastic, that this is something that can be changed. What do you think the main points are that that person should know? Um, first of all, join the community. <laughs> Don't hesitate to do this. It's That's so sweet. Thank you. A question of time when you will do it, but <laughs> thinking about it, do it immediately. Um, and just, um, yeah, trust that this is getting better you you will find um the tools to for you to to get better um definitely and um it's a it's a way it's a long way and um nothing is helping maybe immediately or um, maybe for some people it is but um some some things just need time mm -hmm. and um yeah, I think this is, is the most important thing. And the, the accepting part you were man, uh, mentioning on your videos as well. As soon as I I stopped thinking about, oh, my gosh, um, I don't want this for the rest of my life. And Whoa, what's happening if I have it the rest of my life? Um, as soon as I thought, okay, it is here now. Other people suffer from other chronic things. This is my thing now. Um, I have my tools and I work on them and it, it will be better. I will have that interview. <laughs> I will have that interview. I know. I remember. So I don't think I said this since we've been broadcasting, Petra, but I remember when you joined the community, I think it's one of the first things that you said, You or maybe not right away, but you said, you commented somewhere, just so you know, this is one of my goals. This is, this is like, my ultimate goal. I want to be interviewed for YouTube because that's how I'll know that I'm really, I'm really recovering. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that, uh, and I want to circle back also to another thing that you said about therapy. So and you, of course, you don't have to share more than you've already shared so generously with us. Of course, everyone's would love to hear all of the deepest, darkest things that have ever happened to you. But um, I, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on someone who has triple PD, who's made the kind of recovery that you have. Do you think that therapy is beneficial for someone like that? And, and why it might be beneficial for them? Um, I, I didn't try it before. I will start in September. So mm -hmm. um, I cannot totally say if it's um, helping, but I, I'm sure it will help. I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there are some deeper things um, we are maybe not able to to find by ourselves um, mm -hmm. because um, some of the um, trauma things um, happen and you don't know that there is a problem or, or that this caused a, a problem. Um, mm -hmm. My husband, um, as a GP, he's working with a lot of people and um, mm -hmm. he's very open for all sorts of um, other medical stuff. And he also is working on the mental parts of people. And he said that sometimes people have a clear issue and he thought this might have caused a trauma. But when he's talking with them mm -hmm. and he realized, oh no, there was a totally other story and not a bad story like the actual one, who might have caused some issues, and you, mm -hmm. I think you don't, you're 
might not be able to find uh, to figure that out. And and it's yeah. like you're saying, I loved how you, you mentioned earlier, you were talking about the stress bucket. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, I'll link to that video. So it's a video on stress. So people know what I'm talking about, but, and what you're talking about, but so you get the sense that what's causing stress to make you tip over into symptoms or go into symptoms is that maybe there are some unresolved things in your bucket that that you think therapy might help you untangle yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah yeah so they yeah. are yeah i had i had some childhood experiences and um i think being like in my garden retreat silence thing, I started uh, thinking too much about life and the purpose in life. And um, I started, I, I think I got this symptom of fear and anxiety as well. And um, this is um, setting me down with my self um, confidence. So um, this is, these are parts I need to work on definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm so excited for you to do that because uh, you know I one of the questions I get asked a lot by pretty much everyone is can I go back to normal or I just want to go back to the way things were and I always think do you really want to go back to the way things were because that kind of set you up not not in a blaming way but that yeah. life you were living set you up to to end up with a chronic set yeah. of symptoms right and and not to say that it's the same for everyone some people have a physical cause that starts everything off but your nervous system has to be in a pretty stressed out state to keep yeah. symptoms going right so i wish i really wish everyone would take that approach and and of course a lot of people don't have access to therapists but that deep digging that you're talking about i think is a very important part of the process and there, there has to be some growth in order to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So one other thing you mentioned that I think also is worth highlighting is how supportive your husband was. And yeah. How, yeah. Yeah. I, I could um, talk um, a lot to him, um, but sometimes, um, yeah, I, I was a little bit annoyed, of course, of him because my family, they knew, but as soon um, as I started feeling better, I felt like, oh, they are not recognizing it is still there. And mm -hmm. um, so sometimes <laughs> there were situations um, where they wanted something for me, and it, it was too much. And I said, no, I'm I'm still not fine. I don't I don't feel well. I I cannot do. Maybe they said, oh, let's watch a movie. And I said, yeah, you can watch the movie. I cannot watch the movie. Remember, <laughs> right? <laughs> but. Because um, you were feeling much better, so and they could see it, but then they would assume you're just feeling a hundred percent, and you weren't. Yeah, and as, as long as I was lying down, it was clear to them. But when I got back to or more normal life, and um, they they didn't realize. So sometimes I felt like, yeah, you know, I'm still having it. <laughs> yeah, and, but on the other side, it is good that they they thought, oh, she might be over it because this is what I I think I show them um right? yeah and i'm, I'm not doing more yeah always oh, i'm if everything is bad and oh i'm not that person so i i do my my daily business and i i do what i need to do and um yeah so i think some of my friends in in germany i i told about it they don't realize um that i'm still suffering when i'm mm -hmm. talking to them um mm -hmm. No, they don't, they don't yeah. realize. Yes, yes. And so it's important to strike that balance, right? To be seen, to know that your suffering is being seen, which is also another place where a community can really help because you're they get it, right? I mean, we, we really get it. But at the same time, not wallowing in the symptoms anymore, like you're saying, and, and just getting back to life. So what's the thing you're proudest of going back to doing? since you started feeling better, what's the most challenging thing or the thing that you feel proudest of being able to do again? Um, when I, uh, when all this started, um, I, I couldn't imagine to, to work somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I felt like, oh my gosh, I have to 
uh, meditate, I have to do yoga, I have to do the exercises. This is going to keep me busy. How are people doing yeah. this? and they are working? Where's the time for this? Um, and I um, luckily I, I didn't work at that um, stage um, because I was still, uh, yeah, we, we moved into the new house, uh, we had to settle, and um, I had this big garden what needed um, my support. And yeah, so when I decided to to do some volunteering work in February at the Hundertwasser building, um, I felt, oh, okay, this is still a challenge because of the uneven floors. They challenge me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but then I decided, oh, I would like to do some um, guided tours. So I started uh, learning all about this. And um, since uh, I think four weeks, I'm doing it. Um, I, I'm set free and I, I, I can do it. It is still a challenge because I am dizzy when I'm doing it because I have to talk to people, um, but I can do it. And I, I get so much from the people who are coming and, and enjoy my tour. And um, I'm really proud of this being brave to do it. Even I have symptoms and um yeah, just to, to keep me in a way busy, not thinking about the symptoms all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it is stressful. I'm, I'm nervous before I do this. Um, when I arrive in town, I always take my 15 minutes and I do a meditation before I go out of the car and I go into the building. Um, I need to do this and uh, just to settle myself. Um, but afterwards, I feel like, yes, I did it. <laughs> Oh, now that's wonderful. And and it sounds like even though the symptoms are there and uncomfortable, it's still they're not as intimidating to you as they were. They're not scaring you like they used to. Like you just you're like, I know they're here and I know, but I know what to work on. I know what I need to do to recover. It's no longer a question of am I gonna recover? It's a question of what work do I need to put in to continue recovering. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I would like to mention as well, um, after my my really downtime in March, I felt like, um, oh, maybe I'm, I'm never ever going um, to be well again. And then I started, no, um, I would like to focus on good days. So um, I printed out a monthly um, day um, calendar and mm -hmm. I marked um, every day with a traffic light so red was really bad um yellow was okay and green was just green and super a good day and um i remember that in in april it was mostly red orange and then it changed to orange green and um i would say i'm now half of green and a little bit of yellow and mm -hmm. i needed this not to to focus on my bad symptoms just because I thought I need something that shows me that I have good days because you don't think about the good days. You have them, but they are not as heavy as the bad days. Mm -hmm. So um, after three months, I took a look on these lists and I really could see there are so many green days and that's, it is working, it is working. That is such a good idea. So I've always cautioned people about don't track symptoms, right? Like, right. But, but what you're describing is more of a, a way of, of emphasizing the, the good days that you have, or uh, I have another person. Um, so actually my, I'm going to give Maya credit for it. This is Maya's idea. Maya, thank you. This is brilliant idea. She tracks her avoidance. So did I avoid a lot today or did I not avoid a lot today? And yeah. she she has like a scale, how much she avoided something, right? So it's, again, a way of tracking progress, which I think is so important without, yeah. I had this symptom today and I had this symptom today and this symptom, right? You you just tracked, was it a good day or a, tr a challenging day? That's, yeah. that's wonderful. And that's also something we talk about in the community a lot with, I, you know, I tell people, I give people all sorts of advice to, about how to make sure that you create something for yourself on the good days so that you know that you have something to read or something to watch or look at on the on the bad days to to show yourself they really happened. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. yeah. That's- so I was, do you have any other advice you'd like to share for people going through triple PD or other types of chronic dizziness? Um, yeah, I would, I would just say, um, trust your body. And, um, I think we are all gifted, uh, with our bodies because they are so sensitive that they are telling us what they need. And, um, yeah, tr- just trust, trust your body and try to get as much uh, time for yourself. Um, um, at the moment I try to have definitely one day per week where I can watch your videos um, where I can do more meditation and more yoga and I'm, I'm fighting to have this day just free um, I'm I'm doing meditation every day but um, this special day is needs to be there just to to focus on the progress and um, yeah just I think take your time and don't don't get stressed about it it's it's gonna be better it it will be better and um i realized also that um i'm not able to read about symptoms others have <laughs> because this it can make it worse it can make it worse yeah it's, str- it's stressful yeah, yeah. So i'm focusing more on recovery stories or on what what could help me to get better mm-hmm. and not reading when I, I started reading about this, um, I realized some people wrote how long they are suffering from this. I said, no, 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 this is nothing for me. I cannot read this. It's not helpful. Yeah. No. Yeah. And and so, because for, for you, so the timeline, if I understand it, it was really in August of last year that things started to get bad. Yeah. I think so it's about a year for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's, again, it's, it's individual. I, I think like you're saying, different people have different past experiences. And in, in my experience, there's no way to predict how quickly someone gets better or how long they suffer. But what I do find is for the vast majority of people, once they realize this is neural circuit and that they can, uh, they are ways to get better, there is almost always a rapid improvement. It, it it, but it's like you're saying, they have to trust that they can, that that there's no other fix, that no one can fix them for them. They they have to do the no, work themselves. No. There's no yeah. pill that fixes it. Yeah. Yeah. No hospital. No. Yeah. Right. I wish I wish there were. I if there were a pill, I would just make one final video. Take this pill, you'll be good. I'm gonna go do something else now. I'll go. I'll give. I'll make exercise programs for you or something. But <laughs> unfortunately, that's, there's no pill, at least not yet, right? No. <laughs> but uh, we all have you, and this is um, yeah. I just want to say thank you to you because you, if you wouldn't have been there, I don't know <laughs> how I would be now at this stage. So you are doing such a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I. I you guys are the ones who have to do all the hard work. I'm just. Give, I give you ideas, but you're the ones who have to wake up every day and implement it. So the hard work's really on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I am so grateful to you for doing this. And um, I would love to follow up with you. So let's stay in touch. I know yeah. you're in the community, so stay in touch with me. And maybe we'll be able to schedule a follow-up at some point, a short follow-up where you can just share what's changed yeah. after some more time has passed and you've done some of this other stress reduction work that you're working on. What do you think? Yeah, I'll yeah. be there. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you'll be too busy. I mean, that's also possible, but I'm not going to be mad. I'll just come on myself and say, I wanted to do this interview. Petra is off doing other stuff. She can't, but she's <laughs> feeling much better. <laughs> I would always take me that time because, um, yeah, it, it is so important to, to to share this with others and um, all the others who already shared it. Thank you to them as well um, mm-hmm. because it's so important to get information and just feeling I'm not alone. So I will yeah. always take me that time. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. And thank you for taking the time today. All right. So Everyone, if you have questions or comments for Petra, just leave them in the comment section below. 
Thank you guys for tuning in. And thank you so much to Petra for doing this. Yes. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>